Hi guys, welcome back to another video at Jensen's Reptiles. I feel like an absolute broken record, but I'm so, so sorry it's been forever since I last posted a video. I'm trying to get back into the swing of things, but life has been absolutely hectic, so do bear with me while I slowly start uploading content again. Um, let me know if there's anything that you want to know more about or see more about, and I will do my best to make a video sometime soon. But I've been getting a lot of comments recently about uh, royal pythons or ball pythons if you're not in the UK. Um, a lot of questions about how to set up an enclosure, how to care for a baby royal python, um, if a big enclosure is better than a small enclosure, all of these questions. So what I wanted to do today was show you guys how I look after a juvenile royal python here. Now, different people will give you different advice. So do your own research, speak to veterinary professionals, speak to herpetologists, and speak to good breeders. Um, don't always take the first advice you read online. Uh, sadly, a lot of information about royal pythons is scarily inaccurate. Um, but I want to show you how well my uh, latest little addition is doing in this three foot Viv exotic enclosure. So you can see, it's not an enormous enclosure, but it's it's a good size for a little baby snake. We've got uh, hiding spots over here, including kind of this decoration. Now, as much as this is more for me than for the snake, because he's, I'm sure, not aware what this is, um, it does provide a hiding spot. So you can see, you can curl away in there, you can come out through the eyes, and it's got a hole in the back. Things like that are multifunctional as decoration and also for hiding. This hide down here is over in the back corner. Try to put a few things around it to make it seem as hidden away and dark as possible. As you can see, if you look into the hide, it's very it's very hard to see what's going on in there because it's dark. Um, in fact, you'll see that one side of the enclosure is lit and the other side isn't. Uh, that wasn't actually a conscious choice at the time. Uh, you can see the brackets are up here for the other lights to go in. I just didn't have any spare when I brought this little guy at home um, but it's actually working out really well because having this light gradient means that he can be in the light if he wants to but he can also go over to the other side where it's a bit darker now royal pythons are typically more active at night so we usually see him in the evening anyway but that being said he does pop his head out and have a good little look around moving over to this side of the enclosure there's another hide that is the hide that he's in currently i'm not going to lift it just yet but i will show you him in just a moment so, a three foot enclosure, or just under, a hide here, a hide here, and an extra one here. Two's the absolute minimum that you want to give. Now, in the middle I've got a water bowl. You always want to make sure you're providing fresh water to your snake no matter what. I keep that towards the hot side in this enclosure, but not like directly under it because there's not that much space here. So, when I'm thinking about feeding, I want to have open spaces in front of hides. So there's an open space here, and there's an open space here. That's the only open space I'm really concerned about. And if you have a shy snake, keep a couple spots open for feeding, next to the hides preferably, and then clutter the rest. So I've got some branches going up. Uh, contrary to popular belief, royal pythons love to climb and they are very good at it. Anyone saying that a fool can hurt them, this enclosure is not even two feet tall. Two feet will not hurt your snake, I can promise you that. Um, but they are really good at climbing, so giving them some extra height is good, it keeps your snake fit and healthy. There are so many overweight royal pythons, it's unreal. If you're the type of person that says, I want to power feed my snake, I want to give them loads of food, I want them to get big and fat so I can have a large snake, royal pythons are not the snake for you. What will happen is you will have a big fat snake very quickly, and then they will die young, which is very, very sad. And I'm sure as anyone... Anyone who's an animal lover or a pet owner out there doesn't want their animal to die prematurely. So let them grow nice and slowly at their own rate. Feed them good, healthy food with a bit of variety and you'll have good feeders on your hands. Now, people saying that royal pythons don't eat in large enclosures have often set up the enclosure wrong. Now that is not true of every case, but it is very common to see. Someone will say, no, I gave my snake a three foot enclosure like this, but take out the branch take out the decoration, take out the bits of greenery to hide in, under, and you've got two hides and a water bowl and it's very barren in the middle, of course your snake doesn't feel secure, so they're not going to eat. They're going to be scared. 
Now, putting a snake in a small enclosure, yeah, they're more ready to feed, and that is sadly usually due to a response of, uh, I'm in a tight spot, I can't get out of it, I'm worried, to prolong my life, to breed, to make sure that I can pass on my genetics, I will eat. That's not the sign of a healthy snake, that's often the sign of a very stressed animal, and you will see snakes in rubs and tubs striking more frequently than in a vivarium. As I said, that is not true of every snake. Get to know your animal first, but please give a larger enclosure a try and try doing it really nicely and you'll have a very healthy snake in your hand. Um, I've got 12 snakes here. None of them are in uh, tiny enclosures and they're all doing really, really well. Um, moving on from kind of the general setup of the tank here, let's go on to heating and lighting. So... Lighting an enclosure for a royal python is quite easy. You can provide UVB if you want to. Um, I actually choose not to for my royals just yet. I'm going to give it a try at some point to see how they react to it. But because they only really come out at night, I've not tried it just yet. What I like to use are these UV strips. Because I still want to provide my snake with a day-night schedule. They know it's daytime, they know it's nighttime, they know when to come out looking for food, and they know when to go back to bed. It means that their circadian rhythm is doing what it should rather than being all over the place wondering what time of day it is. Now, for heating, I usually use ceramic heaters, but in this one I've given the Arcadia Deep Heat a try. Um, and it works lovely. It's a really nice heater. It provides a really good gradient throughout the tank. Uh, with Royal Pythons, you always want to heat from above. Please avoid using heat mats. These snakes get heavy and they can thermally block the heat and they can get burnt. Um, heat mats also don't give off any heat to the air. Now, with this way of heating, it heats the ground below, which is very natural. That's how the sun would work. The sun warms the earth. The snake can then sit on that and warm up as well. With a heater like this, it will warm your snake up nicely too. Uh, a heat mat doesn't do the job properly, and you'll find that your snake sits on it all day long just to get warm, uh, which really isn't ideal. But with heat coming down from above, we've got a hot zone here. The heat then dissipates throughout the tank, and it gets cooler. So... You can see here, in the middle of the tank, we've got a 27 degree temperature, which is great. The hot spot around here is usually 32 degrees, that's in Celsius, we're in the UK. And then over down this side, it's about 24, 25. So that's a really good range of temperature in such a small enclosure. You can't really achieve that with a heat mat. Um, when you're using any kind of heat source, whether it's a mat or heat from above, uh, a light bulb or anything like that, Make sure that you use a thermostat. This is the probe of my thermostat here, and the stat is actually outside the enclosure. Uh, for an Arcadia Deep Heat, you want to use a dimming stat. For a ceramic, you want to use a pulse proportional. And if you do opt for the heat mat, then a simple on-off stat works best. Now, if you've got any questions about how to care for a Royal Python, please do let me know. I'm more than happy to answer any questions in the comments. If you've come to comment that you do things differently, that's absolutely fine as well. I'm not telling anyone what they should do. I'm here to give advice for someone who's new to the hobby. Now, give me just one moment. I'm gonna get the, um, the little guy out and I will introduce you all. Okay, so introducing Kimi. Kimi is a banana woma royal python and he is uh, just over four months old. So you can see he's still quite small. Um, Kimi will outgrow this enclosure in about a year's time, at which point he'll get a uh, four foot enclosure, uh, or perhaps even a six foot enclosure at that point in time, depending on, uh, whether I've moved house or not. Um, but for the time being, the plan is to move Kimi up into a four foot enclosure when he's a bit bigger. Now, if I just pop Kimi down here, let's have a look. I just want him to just stretch out a little bit in his own time. So you can see the kind of size of him compared to the enclosure. Um, what you wanna do is make sure that the length of your enclosure plus the depth uh, adds up to the length of your snake as an absolute bare minimum. So the reason I say minimum is because for Kimmy to be really healthy, he needs to be able to stretch out his spine completely. You'll find that when a snake can't stretch their spine and you pick them up, their spine will pop and crack as they move. That's because lots of little air bubbles connect in between the vertebrae. That can lead to some more serious complications down the line, especially if your snake is on the larger side. 
So you always want to make sure that they can stretch their spine out. Now for Kimmy, he can do that across the length of the tank, from corner to corner in both directions, across the back, and of course going up as well. The reason height is important for Kimmy and giving him that space to climb means that he'll build muscle properly. Rather than just being kind of fat and squishy, he'll keep this muscle definition as he grows. And that just means that he's a healthier snake. So overall, you want to provide your royal python with as much as you can to keep them healthy and long-lived. And I think as anyone who keeps this kind of animal can agree, we really want to keep them around for as long as possible. So just a quick video from me today. I just want to stop in, say hi, give you a bit of an update on this little guy here. Um, and also for anyone who's new, a uh, bit of advice on how to keep royal pythons. As I said, if you've got any questions, drop them in the comments below and I'll be back in touch as soon as possible. Hope you're all having a lovely day and I will see you soon.